The reason for alignment is to bring you to the current emphasis of what the Lord is doing now. Wise men and those that can make the navigating pathway clearer for themselves. Worship and prayer are different sides of the same coin. If you are a true worshiper, when you worship to a certain extent, you enter into a plane where you begin to pray. And when you pray to a certain extent, you enter into a place where you begin to minister unto the Lord in sounds and in hymns. As a result of that, we need to be able to understand that while I study scripture, I realize there are three things that men ought to do. The Bible said there are seven days in a week upon which men ought to walk. But there is a day that must be remembered as the day of Sabbath. But the six among the days are supposed to be a day of work. And every mortal man upon the face of the earth understands the value of work. That is why we run helter skelter looking for what to do, which is our responsibility of work so that we can eat. And even God himself walked and he rested only one day. But I realized also in the book of Luke chapter 18, from 1, the Bible said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. It then means that God also desperately desired that mortal men must always engage in the protocol of prayer. It's part of what we do as mortal men. It's part of our nature. Prayer makes us realign ourselves. Prayer is our way to feed in the spirit. As man feed physically and live by bread, a man live in the spirit by feeding upon the energy of prayer. There is nothing wrong with mankind. Mankind is a finished business. Although the part of the unfinished part of his project is in the soul. And that component in the soul that is not perfect can only be perfected by the energy of prayer. Prayer is one of the things that continue the exercise that God does in the creation of mankind. And that is why when a believer stops praying, he becomes an incomplete project, an abandoned project. So he finds his life detached from the current emphasis of God. When you want to be aligned to what God is doing, you must understand the way of prayer. It's part of the structures of spiritual beauty. But yet again, in the dialogue that Jesus Christ had with the woman at the well of Samaria, what we saw in the book of John was that that woman began to engage Jesus and she came to a point that she brought in the issue of worship. And now that in this season, in this time and in this environment, there has been a dispute about the idea of worship. And now there are people that worship in Jerusalem, others worship from here in Samaria, and others are trying to define the pattern of worship. The same way many people define the way and pattern of prayer. And Jesus told her that, well, the time is coming and now is when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth because those are the kind of people that the Lord seek. It then means that God ought that men also worship. Because if God is seeking for people that can worship him in spirit and in truth, it then means that when a man positions himself aright, there is something that can be transacted through the portal of worship. Is that okay? So among many spiritual structures and principles lay, you must going to realize that prayer, worship is kind of different side of the same coin. And that is why you cannot effectively wear pipe into the gate of the spirit if you don't understand the way of sounds. Apostle was telling me how many more times he can be lying down and begin to hear sounds, begin to hear songs, and he has sung many of them. I was in my room meditating and suddenly I was caught up in the spirit and I heard them singing, Hail Messiah, Hallelujah, Thy glory Adonai Sheva hold. I heard them singing, Adonai Yahweh Elohim, You are the king and you reign forevermore. I don't need to release as an album because the intention is not to make money for me. The intention is for you to become a transporting system that can take me to a realm of advantage because when God shoot out that song into my spirit, the idea was not for me to be able to be popular among men. It's for me to be popular in the spirit first. And so long as that song give me a place in the spirit, to give me a place on the earth. So when you read the songs and you listen to the song that our friend sings, there's actually a song of intimacy. That is what we call the song of the bride and the song of the bridegroom. One is for fellowship. The other one is to entertain men. So you must be able to understand the song of Asen. Those songs that you sing in the times and season where you need to climb upon the mountains of Sinai. Those kind of songs are not songs that are sung in public display. And sometimes those songs does not come on to people that have the designation of music ministers because they are too busy in their allotment to make gain. And so they cannot make intercourse in the spirit. There has to be a certain level of contriteness and brokenness in the spirit for you to be able to make that contact. And I bring you a sermon. Where did the revival go? 